I think we're back. We should be all right. Now let's get back with Health Park's radio program, Mega Worldwide. Now, of course, one of our genius members of our chat room figured this out. Who's surprised? Yes. Um, and in the case of, you know, of all these people. Okay, so over, you know, we've talked a lot about where the Electoral College is going to go. And the fact that Donald Trump won the Electoral College but did not win the, the popular, popular vote, vote. And that this has happened a couple of times. And mm. it's, it's becoming increasingly an issue, especially as we go into 2020. And people's lack of trust with that. And and it's understandable. It, it is one of those things that's left over from the idea that states get two senators no matter how many people are in them. Where mm -hmm. land has a bigger voice in this country than, uh, than individuals do. Right. And in the case of the difference between the Democratic and the Republican parties, this is it. And, you know, when people boil down, like, what are these parties about? And there's no difference on an essential system point. Those that believe we are a republic versus those who believe we are a democracy. And those that believe we are a democracy, the Democrats, the Democratic Party, uh, asserts the idea that an individual has uh, the paramount legal right to a single vote that is on match and on level with everybody else's. Those who believe we are a republic, first and foremost, because technically there's wateriness and the watery points in the law mm -hmm. that um, allow for sort of both groups to in interpret constitutionally where we are. Um, they believe that as a republic, states and I incorporated entities as states and others have more value as overseers to that vote mm -hmm. than the people themselves. So the electoral colleges, and, and that's where we get the, the Democrats sort of being more favored by uh, uh, the House of Representatives as a constant. Right. And the, and the Senate being very Republican in many right. ways. And it's in how it carries out its duty mm -hmm. and how it actually operates as a body. Right. So in the case of um, the Electoral College, it's, it's kind of lined up in a it's like midway between the two. And one of the things that we've dealt with is uh what are called uh faithless electors um the the and and in 2016 i did not know this up until 24 hours ago because i was looking into this as as the story came up with me that there were there were more faithless electors people who did not vote with the state's winner hmm. in 2016 than at any other time in history really um, now, it's not a huge number, but there was a movement around it. There was a, 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 a strategy put forward by um, a, like a, a group of conservative Republicans who were concerned about Donald Trump, yeah. who were um, basically expecting him to lose and didn't want the egg on their face of having to have voted for him as an electoral vote right. later on. And then when it turned the other direction what many of them did was either fall in line because he had won um or they put up other people um and there, so of the seven electoral votes that were that ultimately landed that are on record mm -hmm. uh, because some were forced to revert back to the state some states have laws that you cannot be a faithless okay. elector washington state for example is not one of those states so if you're a faithless elector in Washington State, it counts. And, um, <laughs> uh, and and Billy Hutchins gave us a super chat uh, for the Billy Hutchins, uh, the House Parks Chosen Turd Fund, which I uh, will relate to uh, Donald Trump staring at the sky and saying he's the chosen one. <laughs> um, the chosen Cheeto moment that he had on the White House lawn yeah. where he looked at the sky. Can you imagine if if Obama had looked at the sky and called himself the chosen one where the evangel I mean, literally, I, I think all of the mega churches would have just burst into flames Absolutely. in one moment. But I, I, I digress. So there were there were more faithless electors in 2016 than at any time. And this was built around a strategy by conservative Republicans who didn't want this egg on their face. And um and a couple of other votes that were out of the seven, I think, that actually stayed on record. Five of them 
went uh, for people were conservatives other than Donald Trump, but and two of them were mm -hmm. for Hillary Clinton, okay. essentially arguing that that, she, that Trump didn't deserve to carry the state, right, and ended up carrying it anyways. So, um, what's Nico wearing uh, on his head? It doesn't matter. Leave him alone. First of all, this is radio. It's the theater of the mind. So you can say he's wearing anything. Like why does he it have a, a little giant, bit like a pirate hat? Why does he have a pirate hat on? <laughs> right, um, because this is pirate radio now. How about that? I don't know. Does that work for you guys in chat room? <laughs> All right. Listen. So there were um, uh, those elector votes was Colin Powell. He got three of them yeah. as the conservative Republicans were trying to pick somebody else. Now, this was clearly strategic for later. I'm not going to vote for Donald Trump, but I'm going to vote for a conservative black man because it's going to protect me from the, the view that I am somehow as a Colorado Republican, yeah. a racist or whatever. Like, but I... You know the yeah. butt-eye defense mm -hmm. when you're like, yeah, dude, I have so people. many black friends. Yeah, that's right. I was, and and I mean, I'm not going to loan any of them my car or allow them to stay over. But you know, I know them, I've seen them. <laughs> they don't that's come the over. Colin, no. That's yeah. the that's the Colin Powell defense or whatever. Is like, I voted for him to be a president. Yeah. How could I? Like, because you knew there was yeah. no functional way to do it, and and that makes it even worse because you think that will solve it for you. Yeah. Okay, so Colin Powell got three of them. John Kasich got one. Ron Paul got one. Bernie Sanders got one, and uh, and in the vice presidential category, people, uh, the same person who voted for Bernie Sanders voted for Elizabeth Warren as his vice president. So Elizabeth Warren is the only 2020 person who got uh, didn't never ran for vice president and got one. Wow. Now. There is also in 2016, uh, there was a major uh, step forward in American politics in that the first Native American received an, letter, uh, an electoral vote for president and for vice president. Because uh, same person? No, there were two people that they, they, they were. Uh, and, and again, this was in Washington state. This was a this was a Bernie supporting electoral college mm -hmm. dissenter who at the last minute said he was inspired, he's native himself, was inspired to not throw his vote to Bernie as, as, as a point of protest, but gave it uh, to a woman named Faith Spotted Eagle and as her vice president, a woman named uh, Winona LaDuke. Great names. Yes. Um, and uh, in, in, you know, in choosing those people, that, that made history. That was the first like Native American president, vice president who actually received an electoral vote wow. in the last, which is kind of amazing. Little little piece of 2016 history wow. that's there. Here's the scary part. This week, there there was a lawsuit filed by the conservative Republicans about faithless electors um, to to verify their ability as faithless electors to vote their conscience, not the will of the state. In states that don't have a law that for that compulsively like no. they compel you under your oath to do this. Okay, to so vote. So essentially the lawsuit is can we undermine the electoral college? Yeah, but not in a in a hey the majority vote should go this way. Right. The I should be able to decide. No matter what the no matter is. what. Yeah. In the states that do not have a direct law where if you've taken an oath as a, a, you know to vote the electoral college with the the state and care basically that it's a perfunctory role now that it, you carry it to washington yeah. it used to be a whole thing like you'll you're going to take the bag of votes that we all agreed and yeah. when you left the state this is who won and so by the time you reach washington on horseback yeah the, the bag should say the same thing yeah we trust you to make that ride that's effectively what it was about in this case, they're making the case that if along the route I decide to chuck some votes out of the bag and or, or swap the bag entirely, that's up to me because you entrusted me to be that writer. And therefore, my judgment as the carrier of those votes supersedes the will of the people. Hmm. The concern about it is, and one of the scariest aspects, and why I believe this is strategic on the point of a bunch of conservative Republicans, and why this lawsuit matters that it happened this week, and I feel like I'm getting very Rachel Maddow and these yeah, like, yeah. one of the things you might not know. Um, you did your research. Yeah. One of the areas is that in the states that are going purple, 
that are leaning Democratic, Texas and other states that mm. are looking like that they're going to have a, a hair's breadth Democratic majority in the next couple of election cycles, if not maybe 15 years down the road. But, mm. you know, perhaps by miracle of miracles in a couple of these states, because of Donald Trump, right. there will be this flood to the other side by the people who come out and vote, the independents who don't normally vote and those right. kind of things, will come out and just simply vote against him. Right. That these hair's breadth states, their electoral votes, when they say we give all of our electoral votes to the winner, just because it's been perfunctory. Right. There's a bunch of conservative Republicans who are who are leaning in the direction of, well, we'll decide that that's not the case. And in the in, in how this lawsuit went forward, there is a very scary legal precedent that they are trying to set up for, basically to nullify a Democratic win in those states. And they don't all have to vote for Donald Trump to do it. Aww. He doesn't, he could lose the majority of the Electoral College and they could still take it from the Democrat and he could win because he has the most after that switch of votes. I'll explain it when we come back. It's the House Sparks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide on WCPD Radio, Chicago's Progressive Talk, live from Chicago. I can't believe it. It's so exciting. So exciting. Here we are. I'm gonna put my headphones in and then we'll get her. Um, from the Gold Coast is on. Huh? Yeah, there you go. Um, can't stop lying in our chat room saying Obama played the game so well that Republicans couldn't control the things even without, uh, even with a majority. So now they have to gone straight to lawless. Uh, when this, this isn't the the scary part about this is that it is based on a legal precedent that they can maintain. And I'll explain when we come back, but like the, the part of the law that shifted this week is... This is John Daniel with the Sheet Metal Workers of Central Local 265, and we need your help. It's not a lot different. I mean, yeah, you do. It's not sheet workers. You're full of sheets right now, I tell you that. You are over by there. This is the over by there. Yeah, eh? Um, is there a headphone splitter anywhere? Like a, just a, a mini plug like splitter? Okay. So I'm just, I'm trying to grab audio for the, the shit. Uh, I, you know what I'll do? I'm going to swap it out on this one because I don't know if it's the jack on this guy that's making it awful for the chat room and I'm trying to get, so once we get actual audio audio, um, because I want, I want them, if we take callers to be able to hear it. With little or no benefits. Um, this is your call to action. The DOL's comment be, period uh, ends August 27th. So, Second chat room, I apologize if this is you know, too loud. Hear me at 21333 to voice your concern. At Indeed, we understand that when it comes to hiring, it's important to have a large talent pool to choose from. But sometimes too many good options can be overwhelming. That's why Indeed doesn't just give you access to a large pool of job seekers. We also offer screener tools. Okay, so uh, chat room, did you guys just hear the commercials? Did I, when I played that, was it? Did it sound like audio? Audio? Did it sound okay? Let me know, because otherwise I'll just leave it on this and audio feed is now only. Okay, good. So you did hear the commercials when I did that. All right. So we'll, we'll switch back and forth. I'll be able to switch back and forth during the breaks from these two sources, and it won't sound horrible. Was that okay? That was great. Awesome. Okay, good. Get your cup out of my shot. You madman. You have your own camera. I, did, I got here early and set it up. And, oh, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Did he bring me coffee? No, he did not. I brought it from home. Huh? I got this from home. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not allowed in your home. Is no. That it? My home coffee is my coffee. Terrible. I don't invite him over. You guys are friends, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're friends. I invited him to my wedding. Can you hear it? Yeah, I figured out what was wrong. What? That, that jack can't be pushed all the way in. It's it's one of those dual rings in a single ring hole. Uh, Excuse me. No. Trust me. I, wonderful. I know I'll be cool from this. Joy likes your cup because it has a cat on it. So yes. we're okay. Yeah. Thank you. See, I win. 
Enjoy. activities, and on Sunday, a classic car show. See all the Throwback Music Fest details at throwbackmusicfest.com. This is Doris Davenport, host of the Doris Davenport Show, all local, all the time. I'm on every Saturday morning from 10 to 11, right before Hal Sparks. Now let's get back to Hal Sparks' radio program, Mega Worldwide. Any day is good when I get to hug Doris. You know, She's so that, a hell of a that, hugger. Yeah, she was, it, was, it was lovely. Uh, and uh, Captain, Captain Precious Love um, <laughs> will be performing at Ravinia this week. <laughs> um, so we're gonna, I, uh, I want to talk about Ravinia because we have a, a little live read we're going to do for them or whatever. But I insist that, Johnny Million, since I'm in studio with you, that you sing little pieces of each of these songs. I don't know they, two of them. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to sing Hey 19. Hey 19! No, no, no that's us. What is that? Hey! No, that's not the song. Hey 19. Do, do, no hmm. way. Isn't that right? Yeah. Black Cow. Deacon Blues. Yeah, you don't know it. That's, no, I don't know. I only know Wicked Old News. No All right, well, then stop it. But, okay. the, but the one I, I love is an on here. We're really? driving people away from Ravinia now. No, this is the opposite of a live read. This really? is, I actually had a dream that they sent us a ticket to the Steely really? Dan show. Yeah. Yeah, well, keep dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to. Not now, anyways. What? Like, but well, reel, a, reel it in the years. We'd like to take a moment and invite Johnny Million up. On stage with us right now, he knows all of our songs. All right, right. Just turn his mic. Yeah, uh, with timeless hits like "Hey 19," "Black Cow," "Deacon Blues," and "Ricky Don't Lose That Number," Steely Dan is central to the soundtrack to of our lives. Black the classic the rock home. band. Be quiet. I'm doing a live read. The classic rock band known for its unbelievable attention to detail, which has driven many, many musicians insane over the years. Yes. Um, to create that perfect sound returns to Ravinia for two concerts. That's Sunday, crazy. September 1st, Monday, September 2nd. And coming soon, don't miss OAR, Morrissey, Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. And, and, and more. Uh, tickets on sale right now at Ravinia.org. So, all right. So the scary part of, uh, of the Electoral College. Um, <laughs> Johnny in our chat room saying, Chud is on Johnny's Coffee? That, no, it's not. not it's one. Oh. And, and and we almost uh, we have 150 people in the chat room right now, almost. Uh, join us. Go to infotainmentwars.com. <laughs> so ridiculous. I know it is. It's great. Um, and uh, share the show, if you could, on your social media. Let people know that we're online right now on your... Um, yeah. So, um, in... <laughs> so... Uh, other than the nice piece of history that uh, Tunkin and Najin Wynn, who is known as Faith Spotted Eagle, oh. uh, that's that's how you say her name, by the way. Mm. In, in Spotted in, Eagle, I'll take that one. I'll that's take the easier like, version. Yeah, I'll take things I can Tunkin pronounce for five hundred. Yeah. All right. Well, um, and and by the way, uh, Winona um, uh, Leduc, who was her vice president, also native and, and an activist. Both of them activists against the Keystone Pipeline. For uh, obvious envi- environmental reasons, but yeah. not the least of which is that areas where they cross native lands or are in danger of polluting the aquifers that lead to native lands. What's the aquifer? Uh, uh, drinking from. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, in uh, you know that both of them, I you know, deserve our attention, and it's nice that that be, you know that this yeah, inspiration totally. happened around that. But here's the scary part of it, because this was included in that lawsuit. That it wasn't about, oh, uh, some people will just go, the second choice deserved the majority of the, the, in our state, Uh it just tipped one direction. So we don't believe Hillary Clinton really won this state. We think Donald Trump won this state. So therefore, we're going to give all of our electoral votes, like eight, uh, four of the eight should actually go to him instead of the whole state get him or two of the eight or whatever. And if that's enough to tip the balance, which... uh, um, you know, is possible in really tight versions of this uh, race. Okay, here's the scary part. So the, I, it's it's really hard to imagine. Okay, if in the case of people deciding that they're not going to vote for, let's you know, Hillary Clinton wins the popular vote. States decide they line up and they go. You know what? We're going to give our electoral votes to the uh, the winner of the popular vote. That's how we're going to do it from now on. 15 states have already signed on to do that. If those states do not have included in their uh, choice for electors a pledge or an oath specifically denying those people the ability to change their vote to someone else, they can A, group together 
because a lot of times they are party to party. They, mm-hmm. you know, they they split the parties uh, you know, by volume yeah. across there. They do not have to, mm-hmm. even though their state has agreed that they will go. They could still dissent and give their individual electoral vote to someone else. The specific aspect of this lawsuit, which is really disturbing and gives so much squeak room for them to shift the Electoral College to Trump or whomever the conservative is, if they are within shooting distance but have been denied it by the popular vote or these states getting together to guarantee that this has happened, is that because of this law and because of uh, the elector in Washington being included in this law that gave his to Faith Spotted Eagle and Winona LaDuke, that you don't have to give it, let's say, we're running and it's Donald Trump against Elizabeth Warren this time. And Elizabeth Warren uh, wins the popular vote and the electoral college by a window of, uh, say, 30 electoral votes. The They are able to, um, because of this law, it, all they have to do is have 27 electors across the country that didn't vote for Trump already or that in were in Warren states or Biden states or Sanders states. It doesn't matter. They don't have to shift to the other person for them to win the volume of the votes so that it's like this a B binary choice because of this law and how it was it played out this week. And this will go to the Supreme Court over the next little bit. This is the really nervy part of this is that they simply just don't have to vote for the person that their state voted for. They can pick somebody out of a hat. They can Ron Paul it. They can give it to John Kasich. They can give it to Colin Powell or or an activist of their choice. It simply has to water down the margin. Right. And then what happens is if they it, in the in the I think the magic number is 27 as far as the people that they've been. Uh, you know, they've kind of gathered together, uh, but they are working to get conservative uh, conservative electors in either purple states or even blue states that have a significant volume of Republicans in them to sign on to this pledge that they will hand their electoral votes to the Republican Party, no matter who is running, even if they in conscience won't vote for Donald Trump. Because a lot of them won't in Minnesota, you're not going to find a lot of Republicans yeah. that immediately go for Donald Trump. But if they can assist the Republican Party and keep their nose clean by not voting for Trump, or like, no, I threw in Ron Paul. I threw in Colin Powell. I threw in Lyndon LaRouche because I would rather vote for, you know, a dead sociopath cult leader than Donald Trump. And they get to walk away with this idea that they look, they didn't contribute to the Donald Trump monster monstrosity. They simply could not vote for the Democrat because the majority of voters that they represent in this state who lost the popular vote in their state. I don't like this at all. It's nuts. And it happened two days ago. And if the Supreme Court doesn't or the states, you know, here's the thing. The Supreme Court may or may not, by its conservative rule, shift this whole thing and decide, no, you can't. If you know it, it, you cannot singularly tip these kind of things and you can't create it. You know, it's it's electoral meddling. If you guys sign a contract or even have a meeting yeah. to do this. But how do you know all yeah. they got to do is meet in a room at CPAC with no sign on the door? Yeah. That's the that's the thing. And and strategically, we know that the Republicans have been moving into school boards and all these kind of things as a you know, they've got they're good with this 30 year strategy. Democrats have not been great with this. You know, we have, you know, we heard that the that the the long arc of history tips towards justice and tips towards progress. And we take it for granted and we decide we're going to surf this soft blue wave into the future. And not protect against the sharks that are out there. And these guys have decided, let's make a shark farm where everyone is surfing. Yeah, the waves are going to be big. Yeah, they're going to topple us sometimes, but we can we can see this whole area. I'm just burying this analogy as best good. I can. And all, like I said, this is increasingly concerning because it does not require 
a legis from the Republican side or the conservative side or the evangelical, you know, Jesus take us home by, you know, let's start a war with Iran through Israel, that yeah. crowd deciding we're going to meet at all these mega churches. We're going to find, we're going to have all these like secret electors that that belong to our, you know, our evangelical methodology and our belief that it we can lie because it's if we can eliminate the right to choose right. that in and of itself is Come is on. a righteous mission. Say Machiavellian. Say it. It is. It is strategically Machiavellian. And now on, I can say, uh, John, what does John Malkovich have to do with right. any of this? I have everything <laughs> to do with it, you moron. Um, that's the best. Ma that's the best Malkovich I can do. Yeah. You are an idiot. <laughs> Um, so I feel attacked. Well, that's that's <laughs> what it's like to act with Malcolm, I think. <laughs> so uh, point is, we got to take a break. We'll be back. We're going to take some calls, too. And I also want to, you know, obviously talk about uh, I mean, and what? And by the way, this is all happening while Trump is making noise. And a lot of his a lot of what I said earlier also about his strategy around manipulating the stock market also applies to a soft recession. This recession that is on the horizon. Unlike 2008, which was caused by this Gordian knot of BS that I think even Hank Paulson was surprised by if you saw the flop sweat on his face when he realized the House of Cards was coming down. This is an easily recoverable recession in that all you have to do is normalize trade relations and start rebuilding over time some of the, you know, the damaged uh, it, it, industries that he's created. And, and farm-wise, the leftover food you can sell in American markets. They're counting on that part of it. And they don't care about individual farmers. They like big ag business. That's a multinational thing. People can take ebbs and flows. They write it off on their taxes. It's, they're expecting that. This is an easily manipulated recession that, that could be man-made and the billionaire class could cash in on it the exact same way they cashed in on 2008. Anybody who didn't jump out a window made bank over the next five years. Once things just started going back to normal, if they had cash on hand to buy stocks when everything went to hell, we got to take a break. I, I'll, I'll just keep going. We'll be back. It's the Houseworks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide on WCPT Radio, Chicago's Progress Talk. We got 173 people in the chat room right now just to see Johnny Million. That's right. There he is. What happened? Um, we'll talk to them and we'll talk to the chat room and callers after this. Happier. Her fur is so much shinier, silkier, softer. Now they can. Um, <clears throat> hi. Trump is setting us up for the rest of the world doing whatever it takes. Uh, uh, cancel line says Trump is setting us up for the rest of the world doing whatever it takes to not need us. They can't uh, see we can't be trusted. He's such a well, yeah. Well, this is this is the subversion of electoral politics that on a massive scale dictators are doing across the globe. This is, I mean, if you talk, of all these QAnon morons and, uh, who believe there's this giant, you know, vampire pedophile ring running the earth can't be talked into the fact that this guy is playing footsie, not with democracies around the world, but the, the Kim Jong-uns, the Vladimir Putins, like and the only thing the only thing with Xi Jinping that he has a problem with is that Xi Jinping is actually the leader of a, a, a weakened communist party the, the, like the businessmen around Donald Trump are salivating at the collapse of the communist party in in China and they think they can make it happen they think they can trigger it Hong Kong is just the tipping point the the, the they are looking at the how Russia was broken up I mean, like the, the Russian territories, Crimea and Ukraine, were broken away from the Soviet Union. They're looking to do the same thing with China. Because it's big enough where the five main provinces could be broken up into their own goddamn countries. Yeah. And, and, and from a business standpoint, these guys could roll over them on a, you know, like they would Indonesia or Thailand. Mm -hmm. The way they can't with them all joined together. Dude. And, the, and, and, and members of the Communist Party and, and Ping and Xi Jinping in many ways 
they're walking into this race because so. the they've they're set up they've got a 2008 on the horizon because uh, of re their real estate stuff it's their own near depression it's a bubble De yeah it's a it's a it's a uh real Is estate china show happening yeah when is that can happen there's there's been new movement chat room i'll uh, you know and some of the patreons will learn about the new movement this week so i'll, I'll tell you off air when we're all done because okay. it's kind of a sort of a secret i mean i've got a meeting next week that will finally Finalize it once I know it's easy to do, but I've got to. I want to make sure stuff is really happening. So, uh, didn't your mom teach you to look? Oh, were we looking the wrong direction? See how it happens? Oh, sorry, I gotta swap these cameras. And you're listening to the Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. This is true. This is true. You are. Who That's was right. That? Um, I don't know. Uh, they they never say their full name, so I never know what the whole show is about. <laughs> Who are those people? I don't know. Um, I just call them M H. You know, because everything else is true. Uh, so, um, I just realized our cameras are, are our cameras listening. are backwards. Oh, so yeah. we we look away from each other when we're talking. Can you flip the so, feed? I I think so. I don't. Know. It does certainly look like I'm ignoring you. Yeah. So anyway, how we do that? I I'll can figure just it do out this. In a second. It's a new. It's a new. Uh, it, it's the first time I've tried to split screen. How does this look? We'll just talk away from each other as if this is like it's so funny. Okay. So, the. Um, uh -huh. The Electoral College rule uh -huh. that got oh, passed. Oh, I probably have to listen too. That's right. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm talking to the light. Um, um, there, uh, there was a lot of hinky stuff around the the Electoral College last time. Uh, you know, obviously, I have no problem saying that the Russians not only meddled in our, you know, in our elections in terms of social media, but also in the material. I think they hacked into the Illinois electoral system. They hacked into South Carolina for sure. Um, Lindsey Graham's area, by the way, uh, of the country, both South Carolina and North Carolina were both hit. Mm. Um, the, his behavior shifted after the RNC and the emails that were broken into. You cannot convince me. No, you will not be able to convince me that they have not hacked into his personal email and they've got him on a short leash. Somebody has a gun to his head because he, when you compare like the... His behavior, of, just towards John McCain, just his reverence to John McCain going out the window yeah, in and, and of they, itself is gross. They, they used so, to do those daily shows, um, Lindsey Graham, Graham all day long. Yeah. And, and it's uh, okay. So um, this electoral college shift, this aspect of it is the biggest concern for me is that it not only allows the, the loser of the popular vote to also uh, and the loser of the electoral vote to win the electoral college. So I've got a chance. Yeah. So you're saying there's a chance, <laughs> um, but it also allows them to do it. While, pre while virtue signaling the other direction, while pretending to not vote for, oh, you know, yeah, I, I couldn't bring myself to vote for that loser. It's not my fault he's in the White House. I just voted my conscience. So it is. We just can't let it be this close. No, that's exactly right. This mar the the idea that you can during the general. You can damage your pro your candidates so heavily and treat your own internal candidates as if they are the enemy, as if they are on par somehow. Mm -hmm. Their difference in policy with you, which is marginal at best, it is you are surfers picking a wave. Is it the sixth or the seventh that is the best ride and the tallest? Will I even be able to stand on the seventh wave, which might be taller and carry me further, or will I crash because it's overwhelming? Yeah. But, I mean, the, 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 the analogy continues. Oh, boy. But... The difference between that and the sharks is very stark. And the idea that there is somehow it's OK to, you, you sounded know, sounded like Christopher Walken for just a second. Could we the just idea this? that you go. could somehow <laughs> stop doing that, you moron. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't do movies with him. Yeah, I don't think All I right. ever have. Now, the important thing is my name is Michael. Kane. Michael Kane. <laughs> sorry. Michael. The, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> great to be here um so I, i'm not even gonna whip into you can't go you can't fluctuate that much in too much it's too much uh, verbal whiplash um but uh you know our chat room i think agrees on this i think we got uh some callers we do we not we do yeah who do we got there what? uh johnny I, I see i'm curious oh, wait, about I can old bob <laughs> old bob old bob 
Does he does he drink Bailey's from a shoe? I Do sure we know? hope so. Um, hey, Bob, uh, welcome to the show. Well, there's another fine mess the Republicans have gotten us into. Yeah. <laughs> This is, yeah, this is old Dusty Bob. Hey, but you guys are sounding good. You are either uh, using Western Electric apparatus <laughs> mm-hmm. instead of Brunswick, or you're across the street from me in Illinois today. That's, uh, that <laughs> That's is exactly. precisely what's happening. Yep. And you're dating yourself with your brand. That's tonight. right. Yeah, absolutely. We are not Victrolling today. We are not, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's me. I, I'm, I, I, I date myself, and that's just me. Yo, this afternoon, <laughs> well-informed <laughs> citizens, n- n- tune in to CBS Radio in the afternoon. That's right. Sorry, <laughs> I, gotta, I, I could only afford a Radio Shack portable. <laughs> however, however, uh, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. and this is over here in liberal Indiana. Right. But I just wonder... What your opinion is, I'm getting a hunch, and right now it's more a hunch than anything really solid, but I'm beginning to get the feel that the white women vote this time around won't be as bad as it was, and Mm -hmm. I'm hoping by God, uh, uh, that put Trump over the top or helped. Uh, agreed. I, I mean, there's two reasons. One, obviously, is uh, Republican women are turning on him. They did basically well, like right after the election. And largely they were only in his camp because they hated Hillary Clinton more, which the irony that uh, that that it was lar- there was a big chunk of women voters who were like, uh, you know, I'll take a woman, but not that woman. I I have a feeling a lot of them would have a problem with nearly any woman because look at the Sarah Palin electability ratings. You know, we talked about that at, you know, 70 percent likability rating the Republican Party. But as far as Republican voters, 10 percent voting, uh, you know, would vote for her. This whole thing Mm -hmm. still makes my heart hurt. Yeah. So and you're absolutely right. The difference is the women who will come off the bench. Right. The idea. And and by the way, educated women who did not vote increasingly. The, I I am suspicious of the the people who voted an entire blue ticket, but somehow left Hillary Clinton's name off or or oh, voted yeah. Trump or whatever that I would yeah. say if we had a decent look at electoral interference by the Russians or by the Chinese or by the Saudis or anybody who wanted to join with them or separately mess with our systems. This would be one of the areas where that's the easiest fix to do. You can't flip the entire vote. But you can eliminate a bunch of them and you can you can basically redline a character and go, oh, these were obviously personal choices because they voted for everybody else. Right. 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 Well, yeah. So well, that's a thought, Bob. Flying, children. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. I appreciate Thanks, it, Bob. I hope what you say comes true. Yes. That fingers crossed. Yep. Um, let's, uh, I think we have, let's see. Do we have time? Yeah, we have time. We got three minutes. We can, well, maybe not. No, we're going to we'll save these other calls because I think they have something to say. I got something to say. We know that the next caller in line has something to say. Uh, I see. Yes. Oh, uh, well, then there you go. All right. Understood. Um, we'll be back right uh, right after this break then. Um, but I want to I want to encourage news. people. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we're we got gonna, news. Do, I know it's can the Can I read yeah. the news this time? No, you cannot. If the if the live read is any indication. Hey, pay, and, no, no, that's terrible. <laughs> that's And they are the least that kind of singing band in the history of music. Well, there's some background. They had a lot of nice background singers on there. He's like, no, we can't talk at all. In there. Yeah. Okay. He, they, Michael McDonald sang them. Yeah, he did. Stuff. That's right. Didn't, but I think that was a legal re- requirement in that era. Yeah. Like everybody had to. We can't release this album unless Michael McDonald sings at and least. And Joan Armitrading. Yes. No, I don't, I don't, it's just a name. Did you just make that up? I don't think I did. <laughs> How do you, where, where does that flexibility come from? What is that? I don't even understand that sentence. I don't, I don't think I made it up. Yeah, right. You I've, think it's maybe a fact that you lost somewhere in uh-huh. the recesses? Yeah, that's all right. That's my brain. That makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. All right, we'll be back right <laughs> after this, after I try to figure out who my co-host is <laughs> and who is wearing his skin. Um, it's the Housebox Radio Program, Mega Worldwide on WCPD Radio, Chicago's Progressive Talk. Think about becoming a Patreon supporter. Uh, we've got a couple of new ones this week. We're up to 69 now. We're trying to hit 100. Patreon.com slash Uh Join the Blue Patch Brigade. 
and you'll get a, a little patch in the mail, and you get name added to a list that if you come to one of my shows, you can always bring a guest for free. That's awesome. Show an armor training. Don't just look it up on your phone while we're trying to. I believe I you. Know, as a person. Oh, quit it. We got to go to break. We'll be back. It's the House of Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. Don't just look it up quit on your it. phone. Quit it. Don't you look it up. You did. Hi, everybody. This is Santita Jackson. Join me on the Santita Jackson Show, Mondays through Friday. So I'm going back to Logitech web webcam, and then you guys can hear us okay? I think so? Yeah. So, yeah. Not to be mistaken for Young Bob or Infant Bob or Old Man Bob. <laughs> I Crazy liked Bob. Old Bob. Boy, Old Bob turned out way better than I feared. Yeah. Do you guys know Old Greg? The sketch, Old Greg? I'm Old Greg. Old Greg and New Greg? No, Old Greg is the, uh, um, it's a sketch by the Mighty Boosh. No. Oh my God! You have to watch it. It is the Mighty Boosh sketch. Like it's the thing that I think. I'm about to make a confession you know, to you. I have no idea what the Mighty Boosh is. Oh, well, they're they're a uh, British a sketch duo. Okay. Um, kind of like the Flight of the Concord. Okay. You know, kind of stuff. Are they modern? Yeah. Like, or contemporary? Yeah, yeah. Not too long ago, maybe maybe six years. You know, was the, they had a show okay. on for a little bit. Yeah. Um, there you go. Uh, thank you, Can't Stop Lion, uh, who's our uh, our biggest booster. Bless your heart. What's that British um, sketch show where the uh, the two Nazis are like out on the battlefield and they're talking about like defeating? They're like, there's skulls in our logo. Yeah. Is, are we the baddies? Right. Are we the bad guys in this? Right. <laughs> I gotta. Uh, uh, Can you imagine like figuring that out? I think we're the bad guys. How do I swap the direction of these things? God. Okay. So that's gonna kind of happen. Hey. That's right. And then swap cameras. Oh. Look at that. You look good. I think so. Am I looking right? Now I look. Still look like I'm looking away from you. Don't understand it. Damn it. Makes no sense. You would have to like. Yeah. If you call matters, call call. Oh. Slowly now advancing forward in a more orderly fashion. More I'll see. Let's see. It looks like I'm looking. Uh, I just switched it there. I don't want to do a split screen. Damn it. I'm looking for it. I'll work it out. This isn't about prejudice or passion or prejudice. Physically move the cameras. I can't, Jim. I'd have to physically move us. Yeah, and then like I'm wired to the wall. That's the problem. What's happening, Brad? Yes. Obama came out with his summer playlist. Who? Obama. Barack oh, nice. Obama. <laughs> yeah, so I'd like to come back later. But I thank you for that. He's trying. I don't want to. I don't want to come off as like a whole lazy ass. A little late for that, pal. <laughs> the first thing I think, I think of Devin. I think the old lazy ass. I'm just pissed off that Zoe called up an hour before her shift. Hey, I'm not coming in today. Dun, dun, dun. It's like, oh, you bought tickets for meet and greets at Wizard World, guys. You know, you're really screwing me out of my money. Do you have to stay? No, I don't have to. They're trying to get me to them. I can come back later if you want me to, but I already spent 100 bucks on a meet and greet ticket. I would go to the meet and greet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I got the tickets for free to go through CPT, so, you know, I go off. like, hey, I'm spending money for you guys How do you choose the right one? Okay. Six is a patron. I'm a patron. Jesus, a patron. Would you like to be a patron? Be a patron. I'd be a patron. That'd be weird. It'd be like I'm eating my own tail. That's right. Forty years, we've helped tens of thousands of our clients obtain settlements and verdicts. I had a split screen. Okay, I had a split screen, and then it went crazy. This is Jackie Cation. Okay. That's the person I brought up at the beginning of the show. Oh, I see. Gotcha. All right. The one who opens for Marie Bamford. Yes, right. So if you or a loved one cool. suffer serious funny. injury Good. on or off the draft, call GWC immediately at 312 999 9999 or visit us at uh, jcstartstoday.com. Do you want your basement to be dry most of the time? If so, Permaseal is not the company for you. At Permaseal, we Nothing like a two camera sitcom, that's right. Yes, no matter how hard it rains, 
Yes, Natalie and uh, and Can't Stop Lion can look forward to a Patreon meetup uh, quite soon. I'm, I keep wanting to do one, and then I'm like, oh, I have a free date in a couple days. And I'm like, I have to think about you guys and go, okay, this has got to, I got to set a date so it can, you know, you're not like, oh, let's just pop out and run off. You know? Run out and pop off. What? The old Russian. Uh, uh, you I didn't do his where is this? Oh look at that. That's helpful. Hold on. I got a good idea. Yeah, I can fix it, yes. Excellent. Is the number one volume Volkswagen dealer in Illinois for three years wait, in a row and <gasps> wait. Ah! wait. Hey, I can be like the angel on your shoulder. Or the devil. Wait a second. I don't know where you're going out. Hold on a second. I'm crazy. Quit it, stop it. I will pop your bubble, young man. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Do it. Come on, get close. Get close. No! Oh, 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 too close. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm grooming you. Okay, this is so... You've got cats on your cup. It's, it's spreading. I like eating. Thank you. Yes, Ramon. Creepy. Agreed. Totally creepy. My middle name. It's like they don't know who I am. That's right. Johnny Creepy, creepy Million. million. The old creepy million. The old creepy million. <laughs> the three streams going 15 seconds apart. So it is so odd. And it's always so funny when people call me out as creepy, and I'm like, yeah, that's and that's what I'm doing. Surprising. I'm trying to make you laugh. I don't care you. go and break this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, tr so Trump is at the G7 right now, which he thinks should be the G8 because we should add Russia because he totally outsmarted. He outsmarted Obama and got himself kicked out of Putin. Outsmarted Obama so well he got kicked out of the G8, oh, so and he hasn't been in since because I'm he's so smart. Strategies here. And so smart, so keen, and the way he rides a horse. With no shirt on. So sexy. Um, <laughs> so he's at the G7. And basically world leaders are, you know, word on the street is ignoring him. Seems to me. I mean, you? Yes. Yeah. Like, have you, have you had well, any? Well, I, I, here's the thing. I don't know. The United States is a very powerful country. Are you better placating and, you know, and, and I, I almost used an untoward word for describing this, but. Uh, inflating his ego. Yeah, I, I think that there's something to be said for just like tolerating the the presence without inflating the ego. It's I mean it's obviously a, a real a tricky balancing act, but you know can like there are a lot of people. It's like the guy at work that might come back with a gun. You're just nice enough to that guy. Yeah. To keep from being on his kill list. Well, uh, was it? I mean, was that Dan, uh, was that a Dane Cook bit? Thanks for the chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Like that's exactly. There's a thanks for the chocolate strategy right. with a bunch of these folks. The Japanese Prime Minister uh, Abe is, yep. you know, that's obviously he gave him some chocolate. Yep. Xi Jinping largely was working towards that, not recognizing that they are economically our Iran, as mm. far as evangelicals and people in the, you know, in the uh, sort of economic class that trump is being drug around by the mm. the 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 financial wayne lapierre's as as it were um uh. which by the way we're gonna take a call but after we come back can i explain to you how trying the a we participated in the attack on wayne lapierre by oliver north uh we were we were complicit in it everybody uh, on the left on twitter and facebook were um uh, you know, bought it hook, line, and sinker to some degree. And effectively, all it did was secure Wayne LaPierre's position within the... You know, uh, it, it, it helped him Kim Jong-un his, 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 like, the next tier guys at the NRA Ugh. and get more, like, cars and hairdos. Well, uh, let's... 
I think our, our caller might have some input. Uh, Steve from the Gold that's Coast. Right. Are you in your car? Are your windows down? <laughs> Pedantic? Never. <laughs> yes. And give up their power. Yeah. That's that's why that's not going to happen. That's why the states, by the way, that's why the strategy of the states getting together, certain states getting together and signing onto this pact, that they're going to give their electoral votes to the popular vote winner in spite of that fact, as a strategy from a Democratic point, is a chess move. It was it was a it was a rook move, I would argue, chess wise. And I think the the again bearing analogies as you do um i think it was a night move on the part of the republicans to go oh okay well if that's the strategy from the democrat from the de yeah from the night, night moves. moves you're never gonna listen to that song the same way again it's all about chess that's you didn't right. know that not um with the cake. no but they the literally republican response to it was what we'll do is have these faithless electors sign on to basically a a you know, an oath, like the Oath Keepers kind of stuff. Yeah. An oath. Yeah. All right, Steve, you with us? Yeah, go ahead. Claiming that millions of illegals voted, yeah. undocumented person. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I believe Donald Trump, so therefore I'm not going to vote for the winner of the popular vote in my state. Oh because, yeah. Well, Donald Trump said this. I don't have to. I don't have to prove that Donald Trump is right. Oh, and you. Uh, and and are you going to tell me? And Steve, are you going to tell me that re there are Republicans who would get into a position where they would be party leaders and then electoral uh, voters uh, that don't that aren't cut from the same cloth as the group who believe that it's an invasion and that we need to build that wall and all that. Like, of course, that's what they see. They live through that filter. So, of course, they're going to see the electoral politics and never know that, you know, never believe, you know, no, no, the Saudi Arabian intelligence didn't try. It didn't get into our, you know, sure, they hacked, you know, our, our electoral systems, but that didn't change anything. That's not why the vote went that way. And yeah. Oh, totally. Now, now, I would say this, and it, it's just sort of, uh, you know, to add to the conversation, that there is a, a contravening argument, kind of alien argument with regard to, uh, you know, living in the age of social media. Because if you were talking about, say, a few dozen people that perhaps that would engage in this and turning an election on its head, that, you know, would you want to be one of those people knowing that you would be the, the focus of every man, woman and child in the Western world? For years to come and you would have to deal with the ramifications of being that person i don't know that i would want that responsibility See, but i i'm telling you steve that's it. the part that worries me if you if it was one of those things where i'm going to throw my vote to my party's main candidate and you and it had to land that way and you didn't have that out you literally you you would live with that ignominy but in the case of you know, of the, the the way this law is being was reaffirmed this week, you can throw it to anyone, and it can be this. It's one. It's like one of these Senate votes where, like that, that arguably Rand Paul and Bernie Sanders make all the time. Totally impotent votes that they can go. Well, I didn't vote for that later, but they also knew that the way they voted wasn't going to have any impact whatsoever because they were swamped by people who were actually having a division about the idea. Um, right. And, and, the thing, and the thing is that you, you, you've got to keep in mind that, you know, uh, people who are actually, you know, selected to be the, those who are really part of the electoral college from your from any given state are, are not just random people. They're, they're people who are involved in politics, party politics in, in their state. So they already have a history of supporting this or that, and and people understand where they where they are on these issues. So if they did, as you say, suggest that they would just vote for some other 
you know, third party candidate, you know, people could easily say, wait a minute, obviously this person did this for this motivation. And it wasn't because they actually liked Colin Powell or Elizabeth Warren or whatnot. It was to to switch the election. And this was a way to, by which they could cover themselves. So, I, yeah, I, I agree that this is problematic. Whether or not it would actually happen, that's a different story. Yeah. I, you know, well, I, I believe it is. Here's the thing. I believe it's a strategy. Whether it ends up being effective yeah. or not has yeah. a lot more to do with the fact that um, you know, it, it it has to be answered. And like I said, the crucial the way to fix that is that all these states who sign on to that pledge that their electoral votes are going to go with the popular vote winner, and which is an ever growing list, have to also put in place a law that says if you sign on to be an elector, um, our state law is that the electoral votes go to the popular vote winner in our state. And wouldn't, wouldn't all the Republicans, even if they're in the minority, be able to block that kind of thing? And, no, and, that, and that's the most important. The that's state... the most important point of, about. Uh, that's the most important point about this entire discussion is that, and you, you already touched upon it. That Republicans realize that demographics are not in their favor, right? And, and they knew that decades ago. So it's been this piecemeal effort, you know. So in other words, we'll, we'll create public policy that will restrict voting for people who don't vote for us. Right. That's that's, one part. that's exactly and it. Part, we'll, that, we'll, and... we'll, we'll, We'll exploit, we'll exploit the electoral college. Fear. We'll do, we'll do all sorts of piecemeal things to ensure that we stay in power, despite the fact that no one intended someone to stay in power with that, with lacking that kind of majority. Oh, and you at know, what and point, I'm, by the way, at what point does the electoral representative from uh, each congressional uh, group in the state, um, and or their, you know, the the county electorate. Um, as far as how Kansas runs its electoral system, if it starts to drift blue, do they go actually as the elector for, you know, whatever, Lenexa County? I don't know what the counties are in Canada, but, yeah. you know, um, if they that that electoral representative for that county, even if his county votes blue or even if he voted red, but which, you know, they would not have a problem with. But you get my point could go on my way to the state capitol to assign who both the representative of the mayor whatever the electoral aspects of the state they voted for my county voted for bl the blue candidate but i want it to be the red candidate and since it's legal on a federal level and and i can you know i have the right as the duly elected elector um that if they do it on a state or a county level and they haven't put protections in place you could you could literally shift just by getting that guy in charge and yes that guy would have a problem in that area, but he wouldn't even feel like he could pull it off if there wasn't a portion of the community that would protect him the entire time. That he would fall back into, of course, because babies, because whatever their their fallback, you know, because war. Even if you want to, if you want to do it from a blue standpoint, I had to not vote for Hillary Clinton and get effectively give the electoral. Uh, vote of my state to, you know, Donald Trump won, but I gave it to someone because in good conscience, I couldn't give it to her because I viewed her as hawkish. And yeah, that's absolutely. enough. And, 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 and nothing else. I mean, just simply look at, you know, what, the initiatives that have offered up by Democrats that Republicans refuse to support simply is saying that we're going to create some sort of national system that protects the integrity of the process. No. The Republicans will not vote for, to invest in simply saying, you know what, some states don't have as much in the way of resources. We need a federal election plan in this country that, uh, may, that ensures the integrity of our electoral process. And yet they will not vote for that. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they want the states to, uh, to keep that in, in, their, in their back pocket. So, in other words, to continue to have the potential to corrupt elections. Right. Mean, you know, they're willing to fund a, a new aircraft carrier and protect democracy, as it were, our democracy. But, but they won't help protect the, the integrity of the electoral system, which is a, a part of the Which is what uh, you're uh, fighting for ultimately, the root of what exactly. your soldiers are fighting for. What are you ultimately protecting, if not the right to peacefully choose your leaders by will exactly. of the people? Uh, election exactly. to election. And that is the uh, the essence. And again, that boils down to the difference in party and in principle between Democrats and Republicans. If the Republican Party falls apart and goes away, there will be an equivalent version that will come up that are that believe in the Republic concept. We got to take a break. We're uh, over the point, but I wanted to let you have some time there, Steve. I appreciate the call as always. Good to hear from you. And and Carl in our chat room mentions that, you know, RGB was uh, treated for pancreatic cancer. She's she's fine. She's but she's also almost 90. Uh, you can't mess around and give Donald Trump the ability to pick 
the next Supreme Court justice. Like, the, the idea that we allow this to even be within the margin of error is madness. We'll be back. Hey, looking for a winning team on a winning there we go. Sorry, guys. I forgot you couldn't. I know you couldn't hear Steve at the beginning of that because I hadn't switched the, uh, the, the the microphone back to source, whatever. So there you go. So hi. Um, so uh, bye, Emma. Sorry you couldn't stick around. I'm going to roll back and say hi to everybody. A hugs to Julie. Lord Dracul, good to see you. Jude, what's going on? Hey, Tom, Hal Bakery, always great to see you. I feel like I've, like, because of when we're in studio, what are you listening to? Steely Dan. Oh, my God, you make me sick. I gotta hear Black Cow. I think I know it. That's not until the next uh, break after this. We gotta do that. So, you got time to prep yourself, Johnny. That's one of the, uh, one of the names, like, the name is in a lyric, not in the chorus. Yeah. Black Cow. Black Cow is not one of the ones that stands out. Maybe. Protect your money from the next nope. market crash. Not like Dinkin Blue. And silver. Call now for your free gold guide. Oh, yeah. I mean, that reminds me of WKRP in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. They played it during a break, coming back to, you know. Before they had to pay for needle drops back in the day. Second 60, guys. Yeah. WKRP was so cool. Oh my god. And thank you, Nacho, too, for the video clip. <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I will play it uh, as part of a separate stream because I might skate uphill just making this one work today. So I, I appreciate and love you guys. And thank you guys, the, the new patrons as well. Uh, um, are we going to do more calls? There's only one. We got uh, Peter on the Electoral College. Thank you very much, Tom. It's no use, Tom. If you'd have been there, you'd have been killed, too. The droids would now be in the hands of the enemy. Obi-Wan He called me Obi-Wan Sparks. So that's what set this off. Who called you Obi-Wan Sparks? Tom in our chat. He called me Obi-Wan Sparkles, which is a reference, by the way, that Tom knows. Uh, that's, the, that's the nickname that William Shatner gives me. He calls me Sparkles. Uh -huh. hmm. Exactly. It's curious. Yeah. This is Tom Harbin, and you're listening to the radio program Mega Worldwide on Chicago's Progressive Talk, WCPT. What's happening? Uh, uh, hi, everybody in the chat room, by the way. Hi. Um, <laughs> uh, this is, you know, we've everybody's happy now that we're facing the, the proper direction right. when we're looking at each other. Um, they were hassling me for getting ready for the live read next hour. I was listening to some Steely Dan. I know, to catch up on stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think I knew a couple of the songs better than I thought I did. Well, that's that. they're that kind of band. Yep. I'm not gonna, I feel like now I'm leading into the live read again. No. I, but, let's just do it because right. we're, we're talking about it anyway. Okay. Are we yeah, right? we can do it anytime we want. We'll do, anytime sorry, in the hour. We'll do it live. Shh. What? Yeah. <laughs> don't. You almost. Don't. I almost did. You almost did, but you didn't. With timeless hits like Hey 19, Black Cow, Deacon Blues, and Ricky, don't lose that number. All right, I know how to sing Black Cow now. Oh, yeah? Black Cow. That's not how it goes. Again, you're not helping. Steely Dan is central to the soundtrack of our lives, the classic rock band known for its unbelievable attention to detail to create that perfect sound. It's basically the, the two guys, and then they, they would just torture studio musicians, essentially, <laughs> into yep. playing They're perfectly. They're very particular. Yes, they are. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. And, and the result is amazing. And yeah, this is, it's perfect. And by the way, that's, it's part of the era of when things were recorded on analog tape. Yeah, it was, there were takes. It yeah. Was, there was no cut and paste. There was no grid. Uh, yeah, amazing. I, uh, uh, I'll i finish this, then I want to say that to create that perfect sound, they were coming back to Ravinia September 1st and 2nd, two shows, uh, Sunday, September 1st, Monday, September 2nd, uh, and coming soon, so cool. OAR, Morrissey, Lenny Kravitz, and more. Go to Ravinia.org uh, to get your tickets. That's O-R-G. Yes, O-R-G, as opposed to... As opposed to C-O-M? Yes, that's true, or N-E-T. N-E-T. Yeah. Um, or... G-O-V. Yeah. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> No, no, I don't. <laughs> you thought you did. I thought I did, and then I was mistaken. Um, because you don't even. So I was watching a uh, a special about Kansas. 
Um, oh, it's such a good documentary. It is great. And about how they recorded stuff. And it, and it reminded Wait, me. Did that, they cover why the guy wears an eye patch? No, they didn't. But he still wears glasses and, and he needs glasses. So he has glasses over his eye patch. I would just get one contact. Imagine the money you would save. <laughs> just the one contact. You don't have to get two separate. What? Right. You get the same one, have two, uh, they would go twice as far. Yeah. I'm just saying, that's a good, that's an upside. Anyway, so point right. being, so such anyway. a weird thing. All right, but the fact that they had to track a lot of those initial records, basically uh. live, and there were some of them were nine-minute songs or whatever, yeah. that's why everybody had to be so good there back was, then. They were all so See, good. See, when Johnny and I were growing up, there was no auto-tune. Right. So people actually had to sing. And, uh, and even though we had a drum machine, because we did not have a have drummer, a drummer. We, we would have rather had a drummer. We would have rather had a drum machine, but the drum machine was put to tape. That's right. It, 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 this, nothing was That's right. You about recorded it. it to tape. You're like, when we, we have... recorded out in California, yes. was that on 24 track? That was 16 track, one inch. 16 track, one inch. I, I was trying to remember that the other day. Yeah, I'm like, that I have wasn't it somewhere. Dead. I have it somewhere. Oh, you've got the tape oh, yeah, itself? Yeah, I've got the two track for sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, wow. That's cool. I've, oh, got yeah. the, I've got a cassette mix. Oh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but John and I had a side project called Me and Johnny. Mm-hmm. Um, that uh, And where did that come from? It's the name of a Rick Springfield song. Rick Springfield. Who turned son, uh, 70 this week. Dude looks so good. It looks good. It looks good. So anyways, uh, we're back back on track. Okay, this you is what happens. You know how I'd do anything for you. Aw, thanks. <laughs> oh, thanks. Wait, you've done nothing You've done for nothing for me. No, that's not where I was headed uh, with that. You, oh, Sammy Hagar wrote that song anyway. Never mind. He did? Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah. We have a whole other show today. Yeah, we do. Okay, so um, let's grab. Uh, we got a caller on the line. I want hey. to uh, get them in this from Chicago. We get... Yeah, we've got Peter. Hey, Peter, welcome. Hey, guys, how are you? Good, good. Go good. ahead. Um, why is it that every time the liberals lose an election, they always attack something bad happened? That's why we lost. Other than look at the candidates that are running, just like this group of candidates. Like running. what? Wait a minute. Hold on. So it, it, only when we lose, we attack. Oh, that's good news. Okay, so that's well, 50, that's fifty well, percent of the time. When was the last? When, did you attack the electoral college when a Barack Obama won? Specs of the system, and I'm arguing against gaming it. I'm not arguing that it's illegitimate. Well, okay, but if you're you're trying to game it, in other words, no, I'm saying they're say trying to game it. Us. They're creating a. They're literally creating an internal oath among electors to buck the will of not just the country, their own states. Because of their own decision to do this, and if you're cool with liberals doing it in the face of uh, of the electoral college, then say so. If you think that liberals well, should cool create a subgroup, it, that, that it, I, it, it is what it is. You win the state, you get the electoral. Vote. But that's what I'm saying. That they're, they're trying to change that yeah, covertly. To undo that. Okay. Well, then I'm against it. Period. Okay. Well, then yeah, I'm not okay. attacking. I'm explaining a weakness in the system okay, that has to be weren't. shored up to protect our democracy because I'm an American who cares about the country. That's not me on well, the attack. Thanks. Okay, but you know what, Hal? The other people aren't you. They're not talking like that. All the candidates out there. Yeah, that's are why I have a radio about. show and I express my point of view to that's as many fine, people as I possibly a, can. That's why I sought it out. Candidate. You're not a candidate. The, the hatred that you all have. As a candidate, candidate, I wouldn't want it. No, I understand that. Okay. I'm telling you, though, that you're, the Democratic candidates that are out there are talking such lunacy that they're never going to win. Joe Biden's not going to get in because even if he gets the nomination, he does. Do you honestly believe that Joe can go day in and day out campaigning at five, six different stops for a year? Yes. Up to the election. You think he can? You think he has the juice to do that? Yes. I think they all I can. Don't. Yep. I, I, I don't. He's, he's disappeared now. He's hardly That's out cool. now. So these He's protecting all... frontrunner status. It's very standard operating procedure. And after really... the last year, then and by the way, they were you know they were saying after Harris took shots at him that that he was going to have to come out and do a lot more work to answer it. They picked a direct right. strategy, he refuted, and then he and then he held back right. again and did the exact same thing. And she dropped seven points in the last month. Right. Well, she knows what he knows what he's doing. There's a strategy that functions here. The president right, has. I mean. That's but go not going to hold for him. That's not going to hold for him. Every time he's out now, he's making gaff after gaff after gaff. You know Apparently, what? he was vice president when the Parkland kids came to the White House. I mean, come on. The okay, guy's- so the time. Okay, here's the thing, though. A, a, a gaff about timing or a gaff about uh, someone's a name or any time. kind of. De- no, no. As a baseline detail, those are things you correct 
when you're doing lots of speech uh, speeches and those kind of things, people do them. Okay. But that, but so but the, hold on, wait. Chosen. But the, wait, let me let me ex- finish my right, point. Go ahead, go ahead, the ex- the expression of those kind of things is based on a on a momentary lapse of detail, sure. not on a principal okay. difference. And the problem that we the guy that they're compa- campaigning against, including Joe Biden, everyone on the Democratic ticket is campaigning against, is a person who just called himself King of Israel and s- looked at the sky and said he was the chosen right. one. That's like the that's point. these are he principled ideas about who it's who he Al, believes he a, is. You as a comedian should know better than anybody. Mm-hmm. When yeah, I as a comedian know the difference he, between someone who is joking from a point of ridiculousness or from him. someone who is squeaking truth out by telling he a joke. Tilts, he tilts his head up in a half a second going, I'm the chosen one. If you thought he was serious about that, then I don't no think he's serious anyone. about anything. I think he's an no, inserious human being. You guys run with it. I mean, you're all going after him on the 20th Amendment. He's not saying Joe Biden needs the 20th Amendment just to get out of the nomination process. OK, so Biden, uh, so Biden. A, so you're you, you have an age issue with with uh, Biden. Um, he and Trump are nearly the same age. Um, yeah. so, OK, let's let's talk I, about I, the I, craziness no, that you're talking about as far no, as let, let's talk Seriously. policy. What's the what's what, the what craziness? Let me, issue? Let me back up. It's not an age thing. It's his mental stability. <laughs> Biden doesn't know if he's coming or going. They purposely and, keep and, him and the Trump is a stable trail. genius. They purposely keep him off the campaign trail because they know better than anyone else that he's going to continue to stick his foot in his mouth. I didn't know uh, Martin Luther King was killed in the mid seventies. Did you? I thought it was the six. Right. So the, again, again, Biden, I'm ta- uh, again. These are not habit. principles. These are not principal issues. But, they're, but they're, he is running against happen. someone who has principal issues. He's got okay. essence. He's got moral limitations. Here's, here's, These are not here's, the here's, same here. things. And if you're okay. arguing, you know, you are literally arguing campaign gaffes against the meaning of, of well, policy. No, the fact that Donald Trump is led around by Stephen Miller and Wayne LaPierre. And then after a single Maybe phone call not. from Wayne LaPierre, he changed his position on background checks. Well, you know, if you want to bring up the gun issue, I'm glad to talk about it. The fact that I am pro-gun, worked in that industry for years, outfitting military and police. What does pro-gun um, mean? I'm all for gun rights for citizens. I'm not for penalizing. Are, are you, do you believe? Okay, do you believe citizens should have anti-tank weapons? Wait, wait, wait. What? Do you believe that citizens should have uh, the ability to mount a 50 caliber machine gun on the roof of their car? Uh, to do what with? Go down no, the None of your business. What, okay. do, should they have I, the right to people. have it and mount it on their car? Sure. Why not? If he's sane, why not? How do you know they're sane? How do you know they're well, sane till the second they pull the trigger? How do you know they don't have... Asked, how do you know... Well, how you do know you talk? Sure. The FBI does a background check in Illinois. You go to the gun store, you have to have a FOID card where it's got through the state police. Well, maybe, he the, the, maybe he bought the mounted 50 cal on Facebook. Well, then it's an illegal act, and that's a crime. No, it isn't. And then they should go to jail. No, it isn't an Ill- illegal act. It, it is. You cannot buy a firearm in this country. You're pro-gun. You're pro-gun. Right. You don't believe in any of those rules. You just no, said somebody should true. have a 50 caliber machine gun mounted to the top of their car if they just want it. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Pro-gun is a worthless phrase. You're not pro-gun. You're trying to be pro-Second Amendment, and I respect that to a certain degree. But there's uh, I am also pro-First Amendment, but I don't believe that everybody should have access to child porn. There are limitations on speech. There are are same limitations on guns. You believe on them, so you're not pro-gun. So don't be a child about it. No, I am. But there are laws on the books that make sense. That you don't believe in and should be removed. I don't have a problem with a background check. I have to go through a background well, check. Well, then no why more. should you not have one, one when you go to a gun show or if you purchase one online? Again, you, you guys don't know what you're talking about when it comes to that because you can't just go online and buy a gun. Yes, you can. Period. No, you cannot. Okay. I would put, how much money would you like to bet on that one, Hal? You have to go through a federally firearms licensed dealer, and it has to be a transfer between Two federally licensed dealers. Okay. Read, end of story. We have to take a break. Uh, when I come back from the break, uh, I will uh, read from nine stories of people purchasing guns online. They're fairly easy uh, Google. It should happen. Um, I appreciate the call. You're not pro gun. Um, that that is a bumper sticker version of of what you think you are. 
you believe your own bumper sticker, and that's an illness. We'll be back. Joan Esposito, live, local, and progressive. House members who are asking Nancy Pelosi to open up an impeachment inquiry. She wants to wait until there is this. Yeah. yeah. Why not? I, oh, Why not? Honest to God, I'm, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around. Like, the, just you liberals. You're always, I'm always on the attack. Mm. That's really your vibe. Luckily, though, I also don't believe. That even though I go on the attack every time I lose, I don't deserve. I don't think people should have mounted 50 cals on top of their car if they just want one. So you're safe from me yeah. if I go on the attack because I'm just going to yell at you at best. Yeah. Uh, I do. He calls in before. He calls in a bunch. He was day drinking anyway, and all the all, all the cars. I can. Want to respond to two people. Three people. I want to call the respond response to Peter. Right. I like the idea of Karen from well, Paul from Seattle's good too. But we believe a resume. Do we, do we want to let the callers pounce on Peter? John, and Johnny was uh, uh, I don't know, it depends. I mean, we've got three of them out there. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, Brad liked the fact that you gave the cut signal. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I yeah. turned him off right there. I'm like, Such a boss. Shut up. Right. And that guy changed his mind. See beyond the resume with Indeed. I was impressed that he could actually pause for as long as he did yeah. when cornered. 60. Like, that was something I didn't think that he possessed. He shut up a few times. Yeah. You're welcome. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> it shuts me down, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God, I, I shut up out of fear, and I'm not even agreeing with him. Exactly, I what hate that shit, man. I'm not a confrontation guy. Yeah. That's why I just enjoyed watching you beat up Peter Jerome. What's worse than this commercial? Good question. I fucking hate it too. <laughs> Coming back to you guys. What is this? I don't know, but if oh, show the AARP. Let's make show tunes be more obnoxious. It was. It's probably the worst one we got here. Now that's music. Kenna. Yes. I'm Vic J from Back on the Beat, and here is the Mega Worldwide Radio Program with Al Spark. And music in between there. That's you can get all of that. Million dot com. That's right. That's me rocking and rolling. Johnny Creepy Million. Dot Johnny com. Creepy Million. Dot oh, now I've got to buy that. Yeah, URL. now you got to buy that too. Dot sucks. You know you can buy that. Actually, that I bought. Sucks. Yeah, I bought. Oh, that's funny. Mine just. I've also got it. Johnny Million. Dot rocks. Oh, that's great. Yes, yeah, it's good. I didn't know um, that was for a... your for your geo uh, geology uh, <laughs> collection. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. I wash rocks. So I know we have some people who want to uh, jump on uh, our uh, last caller or are yeah, joining the conversation. It. Hey, what about line two, yeah. Karen? How do you okay. feel? Hi there. Hi, so, a great job as always, Hal. He's the best. I'm Johnny Williams. Hi. Um, hi. Okay. Johnny uh, I have. <laughs> I haven't called the show in a while. Mm -hmm. But I just, Peter, for the love of God, man, yep. stop. <laughs> we get go. it. You don't like Joe Biden. The obsession with him it reminds me of this guy Mitchell and Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Enough already. Yeah. But my to my greater point and. That caller mm -hmm. is, he represents, and I'm sorry, that intractable 20 to 25% yeah. who are never, you, gonna they're budge. never going right. to change. Yeah. They're going to stay with this monster until the very bitter end. I agree. And everybody, yeah. 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 And, and for the, for the record. Just, how how just, will talk to them? I take off my headphones. And, and, and look, let, understand though, and I appreciate where she's come from, where you're coming yeah. from. I'm not talking to him. When right. I'm talking to him, yeah, you're talking I'm talking to him. past his shoulder. And that's one of exactly. the things that liberals and progressives have got to learn. Okay. You engage, mm -hmm. If you lose your mind and you're screaming at somebody because you, you know, like, a, you know, some Nazi nonsense spewing guy on a college campus or something like yeah. that. If you're attacking that individual, if you're going after them on as vehemently level. and emotionally as you deserve, as they deserve to have coming at them, that's 
It's fine, but it's useless. You yeah. are never going to shift them. Right. And the person right. who's just over their shoulder, who doesn't buy in on 100% of what they're saying, yeah. maybe buys in on 60%, but doesn't like the idea that you're vilifying them because they, you know, and lumping them in, yep. isn't going to hear a word and certainly is never going to be moved by your conversation. They're yeah. just going to, it's going to be villain against villain and the whole thing shuts down. Yep. And for the sake of democracy, yep. that's why you talk past them. You hold on to your Absolutely. argument, you maintain, and then you keep pressing forward. But go ahead. Sorry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The other point I'm just about that, and, and that's why I just say to, to everybody listening to your show who wants this nightmare to end, there's nothing, again, you can do about that hardcore base. Nope. They're what they are. Here's what you can do. You outvote them next year. Yep. The, the, Trump has got to lose the Electoral College by an overwhelming number. He's certainly going to lose the popular vote. I predict by 10 million, if not more next year. I think the odds of him getting impeached are fairly decent before the year's up. This guy, it, you know, his re-election chances are getting worse. But yes. as I've also said, the worse it gets for him, the worse he's going to act. Yep. And frankly, the worse his hardcore base is going to react. Yeah. So I would just Absolutely. advise everybody, and, and I appreciate and applaud the way you were talking with him, but just to everybody else, tune these guys out. Get ready to vote. Take mm. five people with you, as you say. Yeah. Stay on your congressional reps about impeachment and holding this monster accountable, and just stay engaged. And I know it's so difficult at times, but we have to, because mm. I think the odds are Trump loses badly next year. So if everybody shows up, for sure that's going to happen. At any rate, thanks again for all you do. And yeah, thank keeping you so much for And um, we love you. Take care. Uh, we love Bye-bye. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, let's gra- uh, let's see. Let's grab another caller real quick before I get Paul, into another Paul rant. Paul in Seattle on line three. Oh, Paul in Seattle. Sorry. Right on. Oh, hey, Paul. I also, yeah, how are you doing, Hal? I also want to uh, comment on um, Peter, the angry, malcontent moron uh, right. remark. Oh. oh. Okay. So, look. As he and I'm, he will say probably on the Dick K show that Al Sparks didn't even let me talk. He only gave me a seven minutes. <laughs> <minute show. laughs> totally right. They call the next show. Right. Right. And, and and so as as he loses every segment of the argument, he keeps going. What about this? And what yep. about that? What as he keeps losing those? And if you don't let him go through his entire litany of what about, here's what he ended up with. And he argues against himself. He ended up with well, what about guns? And then Hal says. Well, what if I want to have, what, what did you say, a, a 50, 50 cal, cal mounted to the top of your car, yeah. And what did he say? For what reason? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he's Interesting the one question. who says that, that fundamental rights are based on reasons. <laughs> and then when you said, Hal, never mind. None, it's none of your business. business. Then he said, then he, he said, sure, why not? He reappeared, we appealed for reason, right? Right. So this guy is really an authoritarian who thinks that your rights are based on rationale. He's exactly what he accuses the left of being. That's right. He's exactly what he accuses and, the left of being. And the amazing being. part was, like, my follow-up was going to be, and it did. It became unnecessary, but I was like, because I just immigrated here and became a, natu- uh, became a citizen, uh, <laughs> I, was in, I was living in Qatar, but I had a, I'd left Afghanistan six years ago, and I was used to, when I worked with the Taliban, having them 50 cal mounted on the top of my truck. And I feel safer that way. And there's a bunch of Jews down the street, and, right. and, uh-huh. there's, a bu- and there's a huge Christian church, and they just decided to build another one. And where I come from, whenever that happens, you roll up in your truck— and you open up with your fifty cal, um, because that uh, because like you do. because I'm a law-abiding gun owner until the first bullet leaves the barrel. That's exactly right. I'm law-abiding until I'm not. Yeah. And so he thinks uh, Peter thinks that the Constitution was written by and for white people. It's actually he doesn't see that the Constitution doesn't give you rights. It presumes that you have rights. If you look at the Bill of Rights, by the way, Peter, while you're waiting for the next show to start, <laughs> you'll see that all of the all of the amendments already say that your rights are presumed. It protects the rights that already exist. Yes. It really does. But if you were to say, well, if your rationale was, yeah, I want a, a 50 caliber machine gun on the top of my car because uh, 
I'm a white guy in the United States of America, and I'm losing my demographical hold, uh, stronghold on the country, and I need to feel protected. Oh, he'd be all for that. But see, his whole rationale was it, there's, it depends on the reason. He went right for it. He bit it hook, line, and sinker. He swallowed the whole yep. hook. That basic rights are based on rationale, and that's where he lost. Yeah, that's a, I, I appreciate you noticing, because for God's sake, like I was, that was kind of the most amazing thing. By the way, um, uh, I went, you know, I, I, there's a couple of websites that I went straight to as far as answering his question about buying guns on online. Right. And one of the, like, Obama had said at one point that felons were able to skate existing law and buy firearms online. And PolitiFact put this up as mostly true. And the, and the, and one of the reasons they listed it as mostly true was that no sale of a gun to a felon is legal. So the, it was technically an illegal online gun sale, which goes to the point that if you can buy a gun online illegally, which means the laws don't clamp down the, the, the that they do not cover the loopholes that allow people to uh, buy, a, purchase a gun, send money, get that gun sent to you as another product. The mm. same way that in some ways you can buy drugs online technically if you're using, I guess, the right code words. But point being is that you could go to a guy who sells guns who absolutely that's all he sells he sells guns and ammunition and you have not filled out your background check information with him as an online seller but you go to his facebook page and you message him and go hey what about this gun well those are about 250 bucks and then 250 bucks shows up in his paypal account from you but and then he just mails you a package the package itself has a gun that he has that he, in a box with a bunch of other guns that have been filed down, used in crimes, d thrown away, bought at estate sales before registries were necessary. You know, uh, unregistered firearms that people had he bought from businesses going out of businesses, going out of business and and gun ranges that just have inventory. Of course. So the like. It's it's goofy. And the way you do that is those people lose their ability to stock and store guns um, if they're ever caught doing this mm -hmm. permanently. End of story. And you and you know that individuals will be selling any contraband back and forth. That is always illegal. Right. But what you can do is stop people who have huge inventories of weapons from providing elements of those huge inventories Two people illegally under the table or through straw men when they fully well know it. Yep. And that's the gun show loophole where you're like you buy uh, you have a buddy go into the gun show, buy it. He fills out the paperwork or already has, which is what typically happens. One of these dudes who uh, he owns hundreds of guns. None of them are at his house. Yeah. And here's the other thing. One of the ways you protect against those loopholes, both the online sale and the uh, um, and the straw man purchase, especially when it comes to gun sales, is that uh, people who are buying guns, if you have more than five uh, either handguns or a mixture of guns or whatever, you have to take out insurance or you have to uh, for those guns yeah. so that if you're passing these guns on to other people and they use them to commit a crime, that comes back to you. That's one of the other things about, like, unless you report a gun stolen, if it's used in a crime, you should be culpable for its use. If you were, I mean, you can put a part in there where people weren't aware that it was stolen because they barely ever use it. And it's been in the closet, mm. blah, blah, blah. But you establish that as a concept to protect the, the right to Second Amendment that you say you care so much for. But that's a slippery slope to gun registration and the... You know, they want to stop people from marrying dogs. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Gay marriage is going to lead to people marrying their cars and their yeah. dogs. And and if it, if you if I can't have a mounted 50 cal, the next thing you know, I'm not going to get be able to get, you know, a, 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 a patriot's not going to have a good weapon on his hip when when he has to fight against a tyrannical government, which means, of course, killing cops and soldiers. Yep. Support our troops so I can shoot them later when they come to my house because I've been selling meth so that I can fill my barn with ammo for the great day of the rope. Oh, my God. More hyperbole. I know. We got to take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> Al is always on a pre-rant. This is true. <laughs> Thank you, Ginger. Thank you for noticing. I've never felt more seen. A pre-rant? Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back.
This is W. John, you need to start sending me uh, tracks that are full of songs that you want vocals just written to. Oh, okay. Just I'll do the I'll do words and melody and just do something. Yeah. If you got some sitting around, you're like, oh, I never really laid over the thing for that. It's more pop arrangement than a instrumental arrangement. Yeah, yeah. Check it my way. Yeah. And you'll be like, black cow. <laughs> I know Johnny will love this one. Black cow. What was black that? cow. Coming down to see you. Was... This group of artists creates work that emphasizes the aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, we got 200. We got uh, more than 200. 100, we got uh, 200 people in there. 189 people. Give us a thumbs up if you can. Yeah. Like, subscribe. Uh, why? Thank you, Thrash Metal and Fun Riffs. Uh, I am a great singer in Nerd Halen. This is true. Yes, you are. Super fun. Grammy and Emmy winning singer and movie star. And never missing a beat. Can't stop lying. There you go. Nerdhalen.banzoogle.com or you can follow at Nerdhalen on Twitter. Amos is back. Welcome back, Amos. Yeah. I'm trying to. My carpal tunnel has carpal tunnel. I don't do that. That's horrible. It reminds me of an old blooper on Jack Benny's radio show. Man, the ship a bit. Right. It's like uh, Leonard Skynard on uh, um, the bitter roots. The bitter what was his name? The old loyalty lies Ed Sullivan show. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, a really good group. Did he introduce Leonard? Skynard. Let's hear it for him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he said Leonard Skynard. How long was Ed Sullivan around? No, too long. Do we want to get one more anti Peter call? Uh, sure. Well, do we have any other alternatives? We got Holly and then someone talking about Trump's motivations. Okay. Yeah, we can do both of them in this chunk. Okay. If we do them right away. All Let's right. go to the Trump's motivation ones and then we'll take. Holly, so we can right. Holly, no second. Oh, we got another one coming in already. Dun dun dun. Uh, London call. Call starts. Please hold. Like, it's like it's like Judy Burnley at nine nine to five. Judy Burnley, please hold. Judy Burnley, please. Hold. Hi, this is Judy Burnley. I love nine to five. Welcome back to the Alex Clark's radio program, Mega Worldwide. Thank you. Now time for the happy ending. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so, uh, by the way, uh, Billy Hutchins in our chat room points out, uh, of course, that the assault weapon ban signed by Clinton worked. Yep, it helped. And for all of you uh, saying that, like, all oh, weapons are assault weapons. No, some are much more suited to. Uh, self-defense or can be used in either, but a um, an AR-15 with a hundred drum uh, round magazine, right? Uh, like a drum-fed magazine. If you can just keep pulling the trigger. That's, that's an just for weapon. killing a lot of people. Yep. That's that is a I I've said it before. They are just pipe bombs you can reuse. Yeah. Um, they the most of these guys who use these weapons are suicide bombers with a different weapon frame. Yep. And and the idea that they can have access again. Here's the thing: have the have your you know if you're a crazy gun collector and you just feel like you should have the right to as many of these toys as you want, and that's what they are to these folks. They mm -hmm. are toys. They are not these. This is not an, an adult, normal human worried about self defense. Doesn't stockpile weapons right. like this. Uh, and it, this puts collectors in another class, or people who have age old you know collections of shotguns from mm -hmm. the 1800s. That's a different game entirely. But the it, the idea that these guys are like I need hundreds of rounds of ammunition. The only reason that makes sense for self defense is at one point you think you're going to be fighting the cops or the army. Yeah. And to that end, what soldiers are you going to be killing? Yep. And some of them believe UN troops. Right. That's right. that's who they think. Yeah. The Chinese or the UN troops are the same thing. And a lot of uh, those same people also believe that the cops and our own military are full of UN troops already, you know, that are, op you know, the QAnon believers of the world, oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah. believe that the militia groups themselves are actually UN troops. This is a new one I've heard recently. Oh, nice. And that those people are going to turn like on. That's secret probation. Yeah, right. They've got hidden outfits yeah. and they indoctrinate you. And the reason they haven't been able to register your guns. So these guys befriend you at the gun range. Yeah, I'm a militia member. I'm, I'm a prepper. I'm just like you. 
and really they're like sleeper cells of UN soldiers who at some point are going to show up at your door in these full black outfits with, you know I'm I'm like the fantasy life these morons live yeah. And then you wonder why they get tired of waiting and decide they're just going to go someplace and yeah. open fire. That's really what it's about. It's it, it, Nothing is more dangerous than a person who's impatient about the end of the world. Let's take a caller. Okay, we've got, uh, can you hit us with line one, David in San Francisco. Yeah, and Holly, hang on for a second. David in San Francisco, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yep. connection to Jeffrey Epstein and the idea of blackmailing people, blackmailing politicians uh, in order to keep their silence and obedience. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the old Roy Cohn uh, technique of pretending to go after commies was just a hoax in a way because they were really facilitating blackmail uh, and blackmail not only of the United States, but of, of the world in many ways. Ugh. Well, yeah, I mean, it, that's I mean, that's not a new strategy uh, to use my uh, Johnny's favorite word of mine, Machiavellian. Um, but uh, that's that's been a strategy around for a long time. It's just um, these the, the sort of subterfuge function of uh, of using that as the appearance of morality um, as a as a gauze yeah. over, over this thing to hide what you're actually doing is absolutely a factor. I mean, it was a, there was a there was a ton of anti-Semitism in the in McCarthyism as well, because the idea was is that any any Jew that didn't leave Russia uh, for a period of time after, uh, you know, they of course they hated Hitler. They chose sides. They went into northern, you know, into Czechoslovakia and into Russia. They became, you know, sort of s- subjects of of Stalin in that regard and then somehow became sleeper agents when they came to they, they escaped Russia to come to the United States mm-hmm. and so you can't trust Jews who maybe they were on our side against Hitler but now they're you know over in this country you know and and it, like the the Rosenbergs were you know a clear example of that paranoia uh, uh, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg now they were engaged in some stuff but they were they wouldn't have been found had that prevailing thought not existed as it were they were you know they were they, they were looking for him and they found him basically but they were looking for everybody else as well so anyway so yes there that he is of the roy Cohn school no question um let's grab we've got a, yeah um yes go ahead thank you did i lose him oh no, uh, no. appreciate the call i just want to make sure we get to her because we only got a couple minutes left holly, so holly yeah five. holly on line five go ahead hi, hi go ahead hi i'm trying to follow your logic and and what i find is Why can't people that are victims of mass shootings, whether they're killed or uh, maimed, why can't they sue the NRA and the manufacturers of these weapons? Um, Why can't we do that? Okay. Good question. Uh, uh, Well, the first part of that is really easily. They have they are deceased. But the second one, as far as uh, the relatives of them or people who have damaged property or who are physically maimed or injured, um, the the issue goes to the legal protections around a physical product in a class in and of itself. And this is one of the reasons why you have to be able to buy any kind of gun almost uh, across the board um, uh, without any classification license to some degree um, to protect all of them, because if if the if you could sue the manufacturer of a physical device for its misuse by someone else, then every car manufacturer in the country would have at some point been sued out of existence if someone had driver. run intentionally run over someone with their car. And so the classification that's that's why that's the legally that's why there. If you talk about a legal slippery slope, that is essentially it. Um, that being said, the NRA is not the manufacturer of themselves and they push a certain ideology and they push for certain limitations on the law. And I believe there is a case to be made in that through certain lobbying efforts and funding certain programs, you could make an argument that they are promoting the misuse of those uh, items. 
that they are and they are pleasant. encouraging their stockpiling of them and that kind of stuff. And you could you could uh, I mean, but then you get into the same argument of can you say that about record labels and music that led someone to do something else? That's why. That's effectively why. Here's the thing. We can classify weapons the same way you can with cars, that you need a class license of a certain size. To drive a semi-truck, you need a different class of license. To have a motorcycle, it's a different class of license. You have to show a certain competence and, and capability to get those things. And I think that's a reasonable expectation. The difference is you don't have the right to have a car in the Constitution. You do have the right to have a gun. So the law is different. When people say, you know, you have to have a license to have a car. And blah, blah. Okay, that is the intrinsic legal difference. That can be changed. But right now, that's the law. That's why. I appreciate the call. We're right at the end of the show. Thank you so much. Thanks, Devin, uh, uh, like, for being here in person. Great it's work, great Devin. to see you. Johnny Million. This I'm Al Sparks. This is WCBT. Yeah, I'm in person. Um, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you, chat room. We love you. See you. Working dinner. Fighting fire. Okay, so uh, Dick K is going to be rolling in here in, in, yeah, in no a real big post hurry, show. Uh, so we don't get to do much of a post show in that regard. But, but uh, 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 let me see this? if I can. As no, there's no signal, I got the mouse working, but the rest of the thing just I might, crapped out. I might, what guys? I might pop uh, this so in here. Real how can I do this? Carry my laptop. Oh, because I have to unplug from the internet in here. Okay, I'm going to oh, sign off and we'll re-sign on in a minute through the Wi-Fi in the other room. Johnny and I will have a post show. So we'll be right back if you want to hang out. But otherwise, thank you guys so much. we got to clear out. You're awesome. See you later. Awesome. Okay, see you in a few minutes. See you. All right. Okay, we'll do it.